Okay, this is another video for the high-level option on series and differential equations. We're going to be looking at the Taylor and McLaren series. Um, if you want a better introduction on this, I would suggest you go to the Khan Academy to their website or just to this link to YouTube, and uh, they got a really good um, explanation. It's called uh, Taylor and McLaren Intuitive to give you a good idea of what's going on with these two series. Um, basically, if we want to approximate a function around x equals zero by using a polynomial, that's what the McLaren series is all about. McLaren series is writing a polynomial that approximates another function, f of x, uh, at around x equals zero. And how they do it is the value when, uh, of the function at zero plus the derivative at 0 times x plus the second derivative at 0 times x squared times a half plus the third derivative of 0 times x cubed times a half uh, times a third, etc. This is a kind of clumsy looking formula. We can ne neaten it up this way and you see that you've got f of 0, x to the 0 of a 0 factorial the first derivative at 0 times x to the 1 over 1 factorial, second derivative at 0 times x squared over 2 factorial, third derivative at 0 times x cubed over 3 factorial. In general, you've got the nth derivative at 0 uh, times x to the power n over n factorial. That's the McLaren series. Taylor series is the same thing, but instead of being centered around 0, it's centered around some other x value of c. I did a small mistake here. This should be x minus c to the power 0, but in reality it makes no difference because x to the 0 is the same as x minus c to the 0. Well, right now we're going to see three examples of using this. We're going to find the McLaren series for e to the x. Um, so all we're going to do is transform e to the x by using this formula. And we're going to substitute in all the values to get a power series for e to the x. So we've got to think about what's f of 0. Well, f of x is e to the x, so f of 0 is e to the 0, which is 1. And then for each of these derivatives, we've got to do the same thing. So the first derivative is e to the x, second derivative is e to the x, third derivative e to the x. So at 0, these are all equal to e to the 0, they're all equal to 1. All we do now is substitute those values into this formula. So we've got 1 times 1 over 1 is 1. Then we've got 1 times x to the 1 over 1. Then we've got 1 times x squared over 2 factorial, etc. So you're looking at a general term, you're looking at 1 times x to the n over n factorial. So that's the general term. We're summing them all up all the way to infinity. So you write in sigma notation. Sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. If you check your formula book, you'll see that that's right. Okay. Let's do the same thing for sine x. Okay. We've got sine x and we'll substitute it into these formulas. So again, look for f of 0, f prime of 0, f double prime of 0, f triple prime of 0, etc. Well, we're going to go take all the derivatives up to the fifth derivative for this example. So derivative of sine is cos. Derivative of cos is negative sine. Derivative of negative sine is negative cos. Derivative of negative cos is positive sine. Derivative of positive sine is cos. So if you substitute x equals 0 into each of those, you'll see it goes 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 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 etc. Right, so all I do now is substitute these numbers into this formula. So I got 0, then 1 times x to the 1 over 1 factorial, plus 0 times the second, this term, plus negative 1 times x third over 3 factorial, plus 0 times x to the fourth over 4 factorial, plus 
1 times x to the fifth over 5 factorial, etc, etc, etc. Okay, if we get rid of all the zeros, and we continue the pattern as we know it, we'll go, you'll end up with something like this. x, this is x, 1 divided by 1, so it's 1, x to the 1, so it's just x, and then this term here, so it's x to the 3rd over 3, this term here, plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial, and then goes minus plus minus plus with all the odd powers and all the odd factorials. To get the odd numbers, we'll have to go 2n plus 1. So writing it in sigma notation, we start at n equals 0, because negative 1 to the 0 will be 1, negative 1 to the 1 will be positive, uh, will be negative 1, and then we'll go positive, negative, positive, neg positive, negative, etc. x to the 2n plus 1, well, n equals 0, it'll be x to the 1, then 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3, 2, uh, two times 2 plus 1 is 5, etc. So you've got your alternating series, your odd powers of x, and your odd factorials. Okay. Last one I'm going to show you is cos x. Now I could do exactly the same thing as I've just done for sin x, but that's going to take too long. I'm going to use my knowledge of derivatives, because I know that cos x is the derivative of sin x. So all I'm going to do is take my sin x that I've just calculated and take the derivative of it. Well, derivative of x is 1. Derivative of 3 uh, x cubed over 3 factorial. 3 factorial is just a constant. So I can just leave that out the front. Derivative of 3x is 3x squared. Oh, x to the x cubed is 3x squared. Derivative of x to the 5 is 5x to the 4th. 5 factorial is just a constant, so it stays there. If you look at this, 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. There's 3 there. 3's cancel out. So that's left 2 factorial. 9 factorial is 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 3, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 9's cancel out, that's 8 factorial. So that's how our series simplifies. So now we can write it in sigma notation. We've got all the even terms, and we've got x uh, 1 at the start instead of x. So starting with n equals 0, so x to the 0 is 1. So then negative 1 to the 0 is 1, and two, uh, 0 factorial is 1, so we've got 1 times 1 divided by 1, 1's our first term, and then we put in 1, 2, 3, 4, and we'll get the even powers, we'll get the even factorials, and we'll get alternating from positive to negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, not positive, negative, plus, minus, plus, minus. Okay. That's one way you could do it. There is another way you could do it. Just look at our general term inside the um, sigma there. Take the derivative of it, and you'll see that it works out as well. Okay, so this was. I hope this was a good explanation of the McLaren series. And uh, Taylor series works in very similar ways. It's just a little bit harder. Um, but you can see with a lot of these, it's just about subbing numbers into the formula, which is not that difficult a skill for most of you guys. So good luck with all of these questions.